As Christians, we are citizens of the kingdom of God, first, foremost, and above all. That's our identity, our priority, our primary allegiance. If you are like me, you hold dual citizenship. You're also a citizen in the United States. And as U.S. citizens, we care deeply about our country and we're, we're proud to call it home. But it does not hold first place in our hearts. That place is reserved for God. Now, it's easy to confuse and even conflate those two citizenships, but they are not the same. This may sound strong, but I'd rather be a Christian in communist China than an unbeliever in America. The kingdom of heaven includes people from every race, tribe, nation, language, regardless of which national flag they salute or which national anthem stirs their hearts. If Jesus is their Lord, they are fellow citizens in the kingdom of God. Still, we care deeply about our second citizenship, and lately there's been a lot to be concerned about. President Biden's struggles are now well documented, and the assassination attempt on former President Trump last week was appalling. Things feel unsettled and dangerous, and really there's not much you or I can do about it. But we can control how we respond. In Colossians 3.17, Paul said, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, if he'd written that today, Paul would have added, whatever you tweet or like or forward or post on the socials. As citizens in God's kingdom, we have a responsibility to make sure that our little tributaries of personal influence do not add to the turbulence in the river of hateful rhetoric that seems to have overflowed its banks. Whatever we do or say must reflect our confidence in God's sovereignty and our commitment to his cause. More than at any point in our lifetimes, you and I have an opportunity to mediate mercy to a graceless age. It's not a sermon. It's just a thought.